Good morning and welcome from a beautiful sunny morning here in Cumbria, but bitterly cold. You could say that Jack Frost is nipping everybody and the poor hens, God love them. It's three below freezing, but it's lovely and crisp. And I pray wherever you are, you're having a lovely day too. And it's good to welcome our dear brother Skip and sister Sue on our live stream channel and a miracle. We're back on Facebook. Alleluia. And it's good to welcome brother Kaj. So good to welcome you on this first day of the rest of your life. Now that you've been welcomed into the community as a novice oblate yesterday. How blessed are we to have you. And welcome, dear brother Francis. So we begin this morning <clears throat> by first lighting our Advent candle. And I must be careful because I got gre candle grease all over the keyboard yesterday. So we light this light. And we commemorate in this season of Advent the most beautiful love story that God could share with us. A love story where a young Jewish girl in her teens is pregnant with the Messiah. And we join them, Joseph and Mary, across the Judean hills in faith, in hope, and in trust. Amen. So now we ring our little Tibetan bells for unity and peace, especially in Jerusalem, where there is so much strife at this moment. And now we share with your heart our prologue of our brother and sister is scenes of Mount Sinai by St. Catherine's Monastery. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. And the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect are those of us who've surrendered our heart to a loving God, a God, yes, who has many names and none. But Saturday morning we commune with the earthly mother saying, the earthly mother and our heavenly mother Mary are one, for they both provide for us the food that we need for mind, body and spirit. So let us just be still now as we come into the Cathedral of God, the landscape, and embrace the divine in everything that lives and moves and has its very existence from God. And just sense the peace of God where you are and now allow your heart, embrace that peace of God. Amen. And our opening prayer comes from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona on the Western Hebrides of Scotland, one of my two spiritual haunts. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more than the sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. Verse 18, 17 and 18 from Psalm 139. And our opening prayer. O God, who brought me from the rest of last night to the new light of this day, bring me in the new light of this day to the guiding light of the eternal. Lead me, O God, on the journey of justice. Guide me, O God, on the pathways of peace. And renew me, O God, by the wellsprings of grace, today, tonight, and forever. <clears throat> and our hymn this morning is from a beautiful book 
Sing Your Faith from the Unitarian Chapel. And it's hymn number 62, Here We Have Gathered. Here we have gathered, gathered side by side. Circle of kinship, come and step inside. May all who seek here find a kindly word. May all who speak here feel they have been heard. Sing now together this, our heart's own song. Here we have gathered, called to celebrate. Days of our lifetime matter small and great. We of all ages, women, children, men, infants and sages, sharing what we can. Sing now together this, our heart's own song. Life has its battles, sorrows and regrets, but in the shadows let us not forget. We who now gather know each other's pain. Kindness can heal us as we give, we gain. Sing now in friendship, this our heart's own song. And that's by Alicia S. Carpenter, born in 1930. And it is a lovely hymn. Now, our first reading is from Psalms Now, a modern version of the Old Testament Psalms by the Reverend Leslie Brent. <clears throat> and our Psalm this morning is Psalm 45, page 73. My heart is full of joy today. I reach almost frantically for the sounds that might express that joy, the words that would proclaim the exuberance that I feel at this moment. I am heavy with praise and I must express it lest I succumb to it. You, my dear friend, were the channel of this joy you touched me with love and awakened my sleeping heart to the beauty and fragrance of life about me. God reached out through your devotion and concern to kindle anew a fire within me, to fan embers into flames, flames of light and passion. You marched into my jungle of despair and made a path for me to walk in once more. You sliced through my confusion and gave order and motivation to my purposelessness and gropings. I'm so very grateful to God and to you. I pray that God may use me as he has so abundantly used you to transmit joy to the joyless despairing lives of his children who cross my path. And I pray that God may bless you and keep you and use you forever. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? Are you sensing anything in your heart? Because yesterday was a beautiful day for me when I celebrated my golden anniversary, 50 years of being in vows. And all I could reflect on was the morning at 6 a.m. on December the 8th, 66, 68, when I lay prostrate for the Te Deum and I fell asleep because it was so long and it was so cold, lying on a linoleum floor with no carpet. And all I remember was having my feet kicked by the novice master and I let this almighty roar and all the young novices and postulants were screaming with laughter and all I could think of was those happy times, the love, the friendship and of course some of those lovely brothers are dead now and some of them were very close friends. But it brings you back to happier times and we need those memories, especially today, where there's so much going on in the world. There's so much sadness, unhappiness, deep unrest. 
I had the misfortune of watching the BBC News quite late and it just broke my heart to see what's happening in Jerusalem with the children of Abraham's God, Jew and Muslim, so antagonistic to one another. And I ask myself, where is God in all of this strife? Where is our God of peace? Clearly, both sides are wounded, both sides are hurting, but not just because of what Donald Trump has done. It goes right back to the beginning of time. And yet, many find it hard to forgive. To forgive. So my prayers this morning are dedicated especially for the children of Abraham's God, Jew, Muslim and Christian, and for our brother and sister Franciscans in Jerusalem, that they will facilitate a peace process. And we pray for the Christian community who live in the midst of all of that turmoil. And we pray for a reawakening in the mindsets of those who are hell bent on violence, to listen to the voice of their God, the God who has many names and none. And we call today our Mother Mary, because Saturdays in the Franciscan family are days that we dedicate to the Mother of God. And there's no better person, in my view, than Mother Mary for bringing a mother's love to the children of God who are hurting. Excuse me a sec. I think with patting the two dogs here earlier, I've got one of their hairs up my nose. Enough. And now, our next reading is from a lovely little booklet that comes free of charge from the United Christian Broadcast to the monastery. And for Saturday morning, the author shares something with us. And they're challenging words. He says, don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. He draws our attention to the New Testament Bible to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 23, verse 5. All their works they do to be seen by men. Here's a working definition of the word hypocrisy. To be seen by men. Jesus had a no-tolerance policy when it came to hypocrisy. Why? Because he knew it turns people against God. Instead, he taught, number one, expect no credit for the good deeds, for your good deeds. None. If no one notices you, you aren't disappointed. If someone does, you give the credit to God. Stop and ask yourself this question. If no one knew of the good I do, would I still do it? If not, you're doing it to be seen by people. And secondly, give your financial gifts in secret. Money stirs the phony within us. We like to be seen earning it and we like to be seen giving it. So Jesus said, when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And that's a quote from St. Matthew chapter six, verse three. Don't fake your spirituality. When you, get, when you go to church, don't select a seat just to be seen or sing just to be heard. If you raise your hands in worship, raise holy ones, not showy ones. 
When you talk, don't doctor your vocabulary with trendy religious terms. Nothing nauseates more than a fake praise the Lord or a shallow hallelujah or an insincere glory be to you, O God. Ever watch children in a playground shouting, watch me. That's acceptable because they're still immature, but it's not acceptable in God's kingdom. Silence the, tri the trumpets, cancel the parade. Enough with the name dropping. If accolades come, politely deflect them before you believe them. Slay the desire to be noticed. Stir the desire to serve God. In other words, don't be a hypocrite. Those are challenging words. Do they mean anything for you? They do for me. Because in the monastic life, I have seen brother monks. When we used to make the habits, I was instructed to make habits as a young novice because I came from the city of Dublin, although born in Glasgow. But because I didn't come from a farming community, I couldn't work on the farm because we were self-sufficient on an island, a place called Cove, County Cork. So I was kept indoors to do cleaning, the washing and the ironing in the mornings and making habits in the afternoon. And Saturdays was cleaning day. But we had one brother monk from Gibraltar. He was lovely, a lovely, lovely young man, but he lived on his emotions and everything had to be just so. And the rule that the oh i just lost track of the many requests he asked for to be incorporated into his habit the hem had to be this the oh the collar hadn't to be too tight and he wanted an extra stitch here really if he had his way he would have had diamantes on his choir hood on his mantle and he was so affected and he, when he'd come into chapel and genuflect, he almost would fall over with reverence. Well, we've all seen it. We've all been a part of it. And we've all seen those who love to be heard. But the reason why I love being a Franciscan, living the contemplative life, is that nobody sees what I do unknown to when I used to run retreats in Egypt at the Red Sea, St. Catherine's Monastery. Now, nobody sees what I do, which is wonderful. And like little Therese of Lisieux, who was canonized patroness of the missions and had never been outside her Carmel. So you see, sometimes when you live this simple life, yes, it can get boring, Yes, it gets monotonous because there's only so many pots you can wash and there's so many towels you can iron. But if it's done out of love for God, then I believe that God can use the most insignificant tasks, such as attending to the flowers, feeding the doves and the hens, washing the floors, sewing a hole in one of the brother's socks. But if we do it out of love for God, then I believe that God can use that for someone who may have a greater need. So in our morning offering, I believe in keeping everything simple. Simple. And the words I often use are, Lord, Show me how I may be of service to you today. And sometimes in that inner voice you hear, go and empty the trash can, brother. Go and empty the trash can. So let us be still. 
Let us gather around this table of love and let us just focus on our in-breath as we come back into the presence of Christ, our beloved, the physician of our soul, the one who knows us by name, the one who has called us by name. For he anointed us and commissioned us to be his hands and feet and beating heart in this beautiful world, but sadly, a world that's become so despiritualized and where now many have taken the true meaning of Christmas and hijacked it. So you and I are here to celebrate God's love for us and to allow our hearts to be opened to the reawakening, to this amazing love story that God could ever share with us. We are in a season of Advent as we prepare to embrace the greatest love story ever told. So now we focus on our in-breath. We take a nice deep non-labored in-breath and hold it and now relax and just go with the rhythm of your breathing and in the stillness of where you are in your little monastery without walls be mindful that you are not alone that all around you are the unseen messengers of God Messengers who bring you love and many blessings, blessings in disguise. But now you hear a knock on the door to your sacred space. And it's Francis, Francis of Assisi, saying, come, come, my beloved, I've much to tell you. So as you walk hurriedly with Francis, he takes you to a clearing in a beautiful forest, a forest that is alive with the glory of God. Every wild animal you could think of is there. The squirrels are dancing in the trees and there's rabbits running everywhere and the sound of the birds, a truly beautiful chorus of praise to Mother Earth and to our God. And this stillness is awesome. And gently you can see the rays of Brother Sun pierce the trees and create the most magnificent vista before you, for below you is a valley bedecked with the most beautiful colors and out of the trees comes the beloved and Jesus stands before you aware, mindful, mindful that here some are hurting some are wounded, some are struggling. And he wants to lay his healing hand on you. He wants to affirm within you that when you call upon him, he hears you. And as you look into his eyes, you know that you are safe. You are safe in the presence of Christ. And Jesus asks your permission, may I sit with you? And of course you say, yes, Lord. And no sooner has he sat down, he throws his arms around you like a mother 
her sick child. He cradles you in his arms and whispers in your ear, I love you. Though you may not feel that love, but I love you. And I'm here to give you the strength today to face whatever through the eyes of my love. And all I ask of you, said Jesus, is that you will allow me into your heart. For my Father, Mother, God created this heart and infused within your heart the breath of the Holy Spirit. And before you were born, you were created a whole perfect child of love. You were a being of great beauty. And now I want to reawaken you to what I see, not what you see. And he knows that you're shaking. He knows that there are areas or issues in your life that sometimes prevent you from going forward. They hold you back. Maybe memories of childhood. Maybe memories of a, of a wounded relationship or being brought up in a dysfunctional family or maybe religious abuse where you were indoctrinated with fear, guilt and self-hate. Or maybe you're crying out from your soul to find a soul friend, an Anamkara, who will love you for you. Just be still and allow the healing touch of Christ's arms around you. Bless you. And as you relax in the arms of Jesus, you're joined by his blessed mother and Mother Earth. And Francis is there with Claire. And on bended knee, Francis wants to wash your feet of all negative energy. And Claire wants to bless them with the healing oils of love. And now Francis is bathing your feet, those sacred feet that only brings love to this cathedral of God. And out of reverence for the divine living within your heart, he kisses your feet out of love. And now Claire comes and she places the healing oils in her hand. She lifts her hands to Jesus who blesses them. And now Claire places her healing hands on your feet and anoints them in the presence of Christ. Feel the love flowing through every part of you now from Holy Mother Claire and sense the rebirthing, the rebirthing of God's love for you in your wounded heart, a heart that's been crushed many times and sense its liberation it's freedom. Be still. 
And now Mother Mary comes to you as your spiritual mother and she presents you with a small gift. And the gift she gives to you is the Teo symbol, the symbol of peace, a symbol that represents you with your arms outstretched to God saying, Lord, I receive today my abundance from your healing hand. Amen. And now you're brought back to where you are and in your mind you are totally transformed by the love and the joy and the peace from our beloved Christ. And as you relax, we bring to this table each one of us gathered here. We bring our loved ones, our families and friends, our children, grandchildren, and those who are hurting. We bring Magdalena's sons, especially Timothy. We bring Sister Sue's friend Paul and his son Ben and her dear friend Kathy, her childhood friend who's terminal. We bring Brother Matthew, who was unwell yesterday. We bring his dear friend Charlotte, a Franciscan who's terminal in America. We bring all my brothers and sisters who have heard the call of God and who've surrendered their heart to God as God's prayer partners for unity and peace from their own home, but as members of a loving family. We pray for Skip and his ministry to our young people in education. We bring our dear sister Eleanor and Diane, who made their solemn vows yesterday on Our Lady's Feast, where they consecrated their heart to God for life for Brother Cadge and Sister Paula, for dear Sister Sandra and Sister Mary in Michigan, we bring them who said yes to the Lord that they want to try and test their vocation to become monastics for God, for all our prayer partners and friends, for those who support the beautiful vision that Jesus and Francis gave my heart at the tomb of St. Francis in 2008, the Frank Clara Abbey, where men and women of different beliefs will come together and respect each other and embrace the one true loving God of many names and dance the canticle of the creatures three times a day, singing the praises of God. We pray for our new foundation in America, the Frank Clara Abbey, and we thank Mother Mary for naming that province the Teo community of the Immaculate Conception. We thank God for touching hearts to give and support that vision for the people of America. For all God's children who are suffering, the homeless, especially here, at this moment where it's three below freezing, we pray for them. We pray for Israel, for Palestine. We pray for healing and reconciliation of old wounds. We pray for all our politicians and we pray for all our religious leaders, especially our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who truly replicates the teachings of our holy founder, Francis of Assisi. For His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh, and our 91-year-old monarch, Queen Elizabeth, who's head of the Anglican Church here and abroad. And for all the men and women who give their lives to God 
for unity and peace. And finally, well, before finally, we pray for Claudia, a dear friend of Sister Paula in Finland, Claudia who's now terminal in Germany. She's only young, but we ask God for a miracle. We pray too for our brothers and sisters on the west coast of America where the storms and the forest fires are ravaging and destroying many homes and lives. We ask the angels of the wind to dispel today and the angels of the water realm to quench all living embers and for the wildlife, God's little creatures. We pray, so let us now unite and touch each other in love as we cross time zones to hold one another as we prayed the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here at this hour our daily bread. Forgive us our disobedience. Forgive us our stubbornness of heart. And forgive us, Lord, for an unforgiving spirit or for sitting in judgment on your children. Lead us not astray, but protect us from those negative evil forces that seek daily to lead us away from your love. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray this lovely prayer to Mary, for it is her day too. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now we conclude with a closing prayer from the Book of Celtic Prayers from Iona. Where's the page? Ah, oh, here we are. Bear with me. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Okay. Ah. On my heart and on my house, the blessing of God. In my coming and in my going, the peace of God. In my life and in my seeking, the love of God. At my end and new beginning, the arms of God to welcome me and bring me home. And as I blow out this light, in the presence of God, I thank the Lord Christ for touching each of your hearts and for answering your prayers. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace from the son of peace, from the queen of peace, to you, the child of peace. If this is your bedtime, have a restful sleep. If you're beginning your new day, then remember, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Enjoy being of service today. Hopefully, we'll be back again at five o'clock with Vespers. In the meantime, God bless you. And thank you for being here. And thank Facebook for allowing us go live. <laughs>